Thank you, Donna. I'd like to repeat something Donna said a moment ago. It is in difficult times the value of PIA comes through. I can't think of a truer statement. I can't think of a time when PIA has been more critical to the survival of our members. Ten years ago this week, many of us were together during a tragic event that brought us closer as an industry, as board members, as friends. In recognition of that day, I'd like to take a moment of silence to remember and commemorate the significance of September 11th to us. This extended period of economic challenge since 2001, combined with singular but critical events over the past decade, has taxed our members more than many of us have ever predicted and it will affect our industry forever. Since then, we've witnessed a trend away from the independent agency delivery system and a challenge to the perpetuation of our industry, our profession. For prolonged economic and regulatory and organizational adversity we've endured since then has the potential of another unpredicted result that puts our livelihoods and association at risk in a dangerous way, one which can eat us from the inside out. While all our challenges reflect a changing environment, some are not new. Let's take, for example, perpetuation. Recently, I was at a conference where a speaker referenced a Rough Notes article from the 1950s, which focused on the need of the insurance agency or the insurance industry to attract young people to the business. Let's face it, folks, we've been talking about the same thing for over 50 years. As a matter of fact, I'm willing to bet it's probably even longer. And the problem continues. We need to attract young people to the business. So, how can we help our members keep up with the changing environment? First, we need to change our image and move away from the dinosaur technology that, it, that plagues us. We need to communicate in a multi-generational way. Most people sell 10 years up or 10 years back, so, and I'll give up my age. So if I'm around 50, that means I'm really selling a, I'm really selling a 40-year-old and 60-year-olds. Take a look around the room. If we're selling to our 10-year cohort, it's unlikely that we're reaching the millennial client. This presents a huge opportunity for young people to enter and grow in our business. And quite frankly, I'm jealous. My generation came through at the end of the baby boom, at the fat part of the belly. Consider today the Y generation, the millennials, which comprise of more than 70 million people in the United States. Young people entering our business now have an opportunity we haven't had since the 1950s. A recent survey found that young consumers are much more interested in innovations such as mobile services, but most importantly, young, young customers are the most willing to pay a premium to get their products to meet their needs. This is why we must work with young insurance professionals to develop the organization. Many of you in the room, like me, entered the PIA after being part of the YIPS. I don't need to remind you of their importance, but I will say I believe the organization needs our support and in return it will benefit the PIA and our entire industry. This group can help us with the biggest challenge we face. We are behind the curve when it comes to technology and because of this there is a growing trend away from the independent agency delivery system. The danger is even more recent and more acute than the perpetuation issue and is equally threatening. Consider for a moment the recent failure of Border Bookstores. Now, Borders is not the only distributor up against Amazon, the behemoth direct seller. Barnes & Nobles are still in business. People didn't stop reading. They just started reading and buying differently. <clears throat> Amazon developed a Kindle, so Barnes & Noble developed a Nook. Amazon and Barnes & Noble embraced technology and adapted to the evolving environment, while Borders refused to adapt. How does our industry compare? Companies such as Allstate and our direct writer friends, in my opinion, <clears throat> are looking to take business from their independent agency delivery system and go direct on their books of business. In time, what's to stop our carrier partners from doing the same thing? The problem is that the small independent agents don't have the wherewithal to assume an online presence like big agencies and carriers, and some independent agents simply refuse to adapt. We know this is a problem in personal lines, and I believe... Commercial lines 
sooner than many of us want to acknowledge, will follow. So how do we do these things? I'm of the mindset, you need to break things to fix them. Do them a little different. If there's something I hope we can achieve by our members, it's to approach things differently so we can ensure their prosperity. We have a great foundation, and PIA can help our members through education, leadership, and mentoring. First, as I mentioned, we need to stay up to date with technology. We need to be able to deliver 24-7 access. We need to be able to quote online, put ourselves into play with favorable positions on search engines. We need to put away the paper files. And our members need PIA, PIA to help us do this. Those who were at the conference in New Jersey heard my brother Keith, who's with us tonight, president of New Jersey, speak about technology. Thank you. <laughs> speak about uh, technology. And I agree with him. I hope so. Well, good thing. <laughs> well, better yet. I've heard a few comments already from staff about the Savino brothers. I can assure you, it's all true. <laughs> we intend to get things done. We need to get back to the local level to reach our membership. Tip O'Neill said, all politics is local. I believe that associations are businesses that need to be local too. We also need to reach out to larger agencies. Mergers and acquisitions will continue in our industry. As that happens, our membership is going to look different. We need to position ourselves to be able to meet the needs of the future larger independent agency. And finally, it's imperative that we, conv that we convey to every agent in New York State that not being a member of PIA is hazardous to your wealth. I'm going to say it again. Not being a member of PIA is hazardous to your wealth. You, the leaders of PIA, are shining examples of the success you can achieve with the PIA as your partner. Time and time again, we've said the benefits of volunteerism are tenfold the commitment. I urge you, and I ask as a personal favor, to share your secret with fellow agents, encourage your staff to join the young insurance professionals, and engage in a sort of reverse mentoring, keeping in mind to open the possibilities that our younger professionals can teach us. I believe you will find that sharing the rewards of PIA membership and bringing new blood will likewise benefit each and every one of us. In life, there are a few really smart moves one makes, and when I look back, that you can look back at and be proud. Joining PIA board and having the privilege of befriending and working with each and every one of you is one of them for me. Another one is having married my wife Adeline, who's sitting right there. And my two sons, Dominic and Anthony. <laughs> I'd like to thank them for making me the richest man in the world. Likewise, I'd like to thank each and every one of you here tonight. I am blessed to have my family and friends here to support me this evening, as always. I hope to make each and every one of you proud and continue the good work of PIA, or which PIA is known for. Thank you.